Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special bulletin. Be careful when you go on the attack against someone that just because you don't like their opinions, because you may draw the wrong attention, someone who's going to open up all the lovely little skeletons in your closet. And that's definitely the case here. Over the weekend, ex-user attacks YouTuber Nerd Roddick, claiming he sells, quote, outrage and anger but immediately reveals he's the one who is hateful. Good old John F. Trent going, doing the heavy lifting for all of us. I was going to make a video over the weekend, but apparently the user goes by Grayson, Minute Nerd News. He went and put all this out, clout chasing, definitely obvious clout chasing, looking for that juicy, juicy interaction. Privated, the, <laughs> privated his account, blocked people, unblocked people, unprivated his account, deleted, put it back up, so, one after another after another. It's almost like he didn't really stand for what he was talking about. But let's go over the thread. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle in, because this one's going to be a fun ride. In a thread on X that has gone viral, Minute Nerd News. Minute or minute? Who cares? He's a troll. Nerd Roddick is a piece of sheer that we've allowed to operate amongst us for far too long. My goodness, are you admitting? Finally, someone admits that... If you don't hold the same opinion of us, you should be gone. We've allowed to operate like you are the final arbiter of what who should and should not be allowed to speak their mind, speak their opinion on social media. Why on earth would you believe that? Do other people's conflicting opinions upset your delicate little fifis? He continued, before I focus my attention solely on this garbage, let us first focus our attention on the explanation of what it is he and his little grifter friends do, explained by one of them. Let's see. We got to... Welcome to every video we make. We use one little thing and then we build the narrative out of it. Don't act like that's not what we do. I don't do. build a narrative. Uh, I you are an my absolute opinion. fucking... <laughs> that's you, you are hard what we do. Get. You've made the same fucking video on the same topic at least seven times a week, Ryan. And you're going to act like we don't do that. I, 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 yes. I talk about, yeah, I, I talk Larson about this one fucking thing and we make a whole video out of it. That's what they're talking about is things that are in the news, in the cultural zeitgeist. What's popular? What's going on? What people are talking about? And yes, unless you're brand spanking new to the YouTube content creation space. Yes, we take a topic and talk about it. We give our opinions. We give points and counterpoints based on what is being said and what is out there. How is that bad? We get accused of being grifters. Grifters is someone trying to scam money out of others on things that they don't even care about, don't even believe in, using despicable means to just fleece money out of people. I wouldn't consider a single person that you see on this panel right here, nor myself, nor even people that I don't have, like, I have differing opinions with. I don't consider them grifters because they're speaking on things that they are passionate about, that they care about. Talking about franchises in whether it's TV, movies, video games, different IPs across the entertainment genre. Speaking about them because they care, because they love the entertainment that they're talking about and they see the entertainment going in a direction they do not care for and that's what they talk about now me myself i could be putting out three videos a day but i'm not going to talk about something and if i don't really care about it mm. if i did then i would definitely be a grifter i would be looking to get all the subs i'd be talking about the olympics i would be talking about the presidential race i would be talking about everything going on around the world but I like video games. I like a few movies here and there, TV shows and stuff. So that is what I talk about. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because it is a YouTube channel that I've been following and a group of people that I've been following for many, many years that have inspired me to do the things that I do. And being a content creator myself and any content creator out there, regardless of what opinions you hold, whatever ideology you hold, whatever side of the ideological fence you are on, this can happen to you. Someone decides that your opinion isn't valid, your opinion isn't right, should not be out there, they can come after you and make all kinds of stuff up. So be warned, be wary, because what happens to good old Grayson right here is what he's doing. The tables got turned on him, but let's continue with the article. He then declared, that's right, folks, they sell outrage and anger. 
No. What they do is talk about the things that they are passionate about, the things that they care about, and they go back and forth and they have discussions, and they do not always agree. There is no echo chamber on Friday Night Tights. There's no echo chamber on The Real BBC or even Critical Drinker's Open Bar. They disagree, they agree, and they have discussion back and forth. That is what they sell. A group of friends hanging out and talking. Kind of like the things that we used to do on Friday nights and Saturday nights, hanging out at the local game store, playing Magic, playing Warhammer, playing all manner of different games, talking about comics, talking about movies, arguing back and forth the pros and cons of different IPs out there. It's just now we have a worldwide platform to do the same exact thing. So it comes out into the light. So now all of a sudden it's toxic, it's offensive. No, it's the same thing it always has been. It is passionate love for the franchises we grew up on. This is what they do. They make mountains out of molehills, which is exactly what you're doing right here, Mr. Grayson, to capitalize on an insignificant frustration. Well, if it's actually insignificant, Critical Drinker wouldn't have 2 million subscribers. Gary with Nerdrotic would not have 1 million subscribers. I wouldn't even be on this platform. Uh, insignificant frustration their target demographic might be feeling and heighten the issue rather than tame it. <sighs> Next, he posts, no, this won't be news to you. I realize that. Nerdrotic has an obsession with the concept that anyone who isn't straight, white, or male might make an appearance or, God forbid, lead a solo project. Now, this little, in this little statement right here is very misleading. Gaslighting, so to speak. I don't know if it's a deflection, but no, it's definitely, uh, I would say a straw man. I'm going to use all the buzzwords. Let's, let's see how many I can get in with this video. It's unfortunate that most of the garbage projects coming out have had female leads or non-white leads, non-male leads, non-straight leads. It is unfortunate, but it is not something that we can control. Garbage product is garbage product. It doesn't matter who's in charge because there have been countless projects, products with all the buzzwords with ideological, well, what some might consider ideological checkbox leads and showrunners and directors and whatever. And they were written well, they were acted well, they were performed well. Squid Game was accepted well. It was fantastic. You want to go back to Arcane? The lead character in Arcane is a lesbian, a pink haired, ha pink hair, shaved head, lesbian. And Arcane is a masterpiece. So this narrative you're trying to push that Gary doesn't like, or any of us don't like anything that isn't straight, white, or male is absurd. Let's continue. This won't be news to you. Oh my goodness. Next, he attempts to gaslight readers writing, quote, but of course he has praise for the MCU. No, he doesn't. It's all trash. Vast majority of the MCU is trash. If you're trying to say that Spider-Man No Way Home is part of the MCU. Uh, no, that was Sony Pictures. It is interwoven, but is definitely not to be considered MCU. But only when it involves movies where the main protagonist is white, male, and straight. There you go. Marvel has only experienced one failure. Oh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Here's the little, here's this little, I can't scroll. This is this. This is the gross box office numbers. It does not take into account marketing. It does not take into account the theater share, which is roughly 50% on average. So whatever this number is, whatever these values are, you take that number and you have to at least half it by 50%. You got the budget down here, these low numbers, sure, but generally speaking, 2.5 times the budget is what the movie has to make before it starts to sniff a profit. But still, after that, even if it makes $500 million after budget marketing is paid for, it's still only bringing in half of that number. So if it makes $500 million at the, at, at the box office after the budget is covered, it's only bringing in $250 million because the theater gets a cut. I do not understand why that is such a foreign concept, usually to room temperature, IQ, paint chip eating individuals like this, but it is not something that can be ignored. I think John F. Trent brings that up here. This is simply not true. 
The claim that there's only been one failure. Oh, there's been multiple failures. John, thank you so much. I brought this up too as well. Caroline Reed at Forbes noted that both Eternals and Black Widow lost money for Marvel. In fact, she claimed in October 2023 that Eternals lost about $52 million and Black Widow lost $49 million. I wouldn't want to put Black Widow in there because Black Widow was screwed over by the studio by putting it day and date on Disney+. Plus. Could it have made more money at the theater? Probably. Probably more. It, you know, may not have lost as much, but mm, it is what it is. April 2024, Reed added Ant-Man and Wasp, Quantumania, to that list, noting it lost $38 million. Why did it lose all that money if it made so much money in the box office? Because the theater gets a cut. Reed also reported in July 2024 that Marvel's lost $118 million. She also updated the figures for Eternals, noting that the film actually lost $61 million and Quantumania lost $39. Between the three films, Marvel lost $219 million. If you look at the box office numbers, I believe for 2023 as a whole at the theater, Disney combined lost a billion dollars at the theater. Regardless of what individual movies made money, combined total at the theater, Disney lost a billion dollars. That is... That's nothing to sneeze at, but of course, Grayson over here isn't going to bring that up. And as a comparison point, that erased the entire box office profit of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which Reed reported only brought in $127 million. Let's see, after this attempt to gaslight, well, gaslighting misinformation, leaving out the important parts. That's definitely what Grayson seems to do a lot of in this little thread. This time accusing Nerd Roddick of racism. He's just generally racist. Really? With absolutely no proof whatsoever, because he has opinions on garbage movies. I'm a racist because I didn't like The Little Mermaid live action, even though in my review and anytime I talked about it, I didn't even talk about, uh, I didn't talk about the main character. Didn't talk about it. Talk about the songs. Talk about the acting. Her singing was fantastic. Halle Bailey. Took me a second to remember her name. I didn't talk about Halle Bailey's performance. At all. Didn't talk about the recasting. I thought the song, some of the songs, a mm, little flat. The taking out of the chef's song to put in that wah, wah, that was terrible. But I but yet I was still called a bigot and a racist. Go ahead and think about that. Figure that one out. He's just generally a racist, so much so that at this point he should honestly just come out and admit that he's a white supremacist. Okay. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the thing. I'm gonna do the thing. Uh Gary, the racist has X-Ray Girl as his, as his producer, uh, always has Eric July on there, but he's a racist, promotes Eric July's comic book, uh, comic book series Ripiverse, but Gary's a racist. Uh, who else? Oh, Clifton Duncan, but he's a racist. Hey, Clifton Duncan's black, by the way. So that's not how that works. If Gary's a white supremacist, if he's a racist, he would not have those people on his show ever, 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 ever. Okay? I mean, that's how racism works. That's how white supremacists work. Not, you know, just baseless accusations like this because you don't like someone's opinion. So much so, this is blah, 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 blah. Never mind, he's racially charged comments that e about Echo. Echo was sh Oh! Because let's talk about Echo? Huh. Echo was terrible. Just face it. Check his comments out <laughs> that he jokes won't make it in. Oh, let's hear this. This one's funny. What there wasn't a lot of was men. Uh, not sure what happened to all the dudes in Wakanda. Maybe they went off to get a pack of Salem's and never came back. Oh, shit. I don't know if I'll keep that one in. That was funny. It's a, stereo it's a joke about a stereotype. I'm sorry if you don't have a sense of humor that you can laugh at. But, okay. I'm sorry. Moving on. <laughs> ah, he then patronized him. Quote, you're just a little boy with a camera and a microphone. No, Gary's over 50 years old. He's not a little boy. Take that away, and what are you? Racist, homo, transphobic, misogynist? No. Okay. Where's your proof? You have this lovely, long, little-ass thread with absolutely no discernible proof. Oh, because let's talk about... Oh, that's it. Let's talk about Blue Beetle. Oh, making jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have protected classes out there that you absolutely cannot make a joke about because if you do, you're a racist, a transphobe, a homophobe, and a misogynist. What happened to comedy? Moving on. He's such a problematic person that his, whoa, boy. Here's where the fun starts. Here's where this, 
is absolutely ridiculous. He is such a problematic person that his whereabouts on January 6th could be brought into question. And I bet you wouldn't blink an eye. This Elon Musk nutsack liquor interacts with people currently advocating for civil war. Oh, because you interact with people on social media, that means you believe in everything they say. That's not how guilt by association works, especially when you're making jokes against the thing that's being said. Absolutely ridiculous. Concluded? No, he didn't conclude. He didn't went on and on and on and on and on. This guy is stuck in a never-ending circle jerk, literally built on the backs of shitting on suppressed voices and oppressed minorities. No, no, he shits on a bunch of white dudes, too. If that's what you're trying to imply. Suppressed voices. In Hollywood. Okay? In Hollywood. Whose voices are suppressed? Who are the oppressed minorities in Hollywood? Because that's who Gary talks about. That's who I talk about. I prefer to point my vitriol against the companies. The people who work for those companies. These so-called journalists who don't do their job and only go out of their way to attack fans of the genre they're talking about. Or the corporations that are diluting the enjoyment of the entertainment that we watch. That's who I go after. I don't go after... I try not to go after specific YouTubers. Because, well, those YouTubers have fans. And if you don't say... I try to generally go after the thing you're saying, not the person themselves. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I probably... Eh. Moving on! But to claim that Gary makes a living on shitting on suppressed voices, again... Gary talks about Disney, about Marvel, about Star Wars, about Hollywood, about the companies, about the corporations. So no idea where you're getting this from, unless, of course, you just tuned into one of his videos or perhaps you were given a script by the powers that be to put out this little hit piece to try and get some traction and put some negative information out there. <sighs> if it's not a straight white man... If it's not a straight white man, he don't want it. In fact, he'll dedicate his time to shitting on it for two weeks. Okay, no proof, but whatever. <sighs> After making all these heinous accusations, Minute Nerd News followed the three laws of an SJW to a T. For a quick reminder, as explained by Vox Day in SJWs Always Lie, the three laws are SJWs Always Lie, Always Double Down, Always Project. That's true. He wrote, I hate him. I hate him so much that I'm willing to spend my time speaking about it because it matters. Unlike spending time photoshopping Brie Larson over 100 times. Well, that wasn't Gary. That was that was uh, that was Ryan on RK Outpost. I think he had more videos done between him and Jeremy probably had more videos done than the quartering. But oh, well, Tyler Disney comes in with this one. Seems like you're a huge fan of his. <laughs> uh, you made this whole thread about him. Isn't that what fans do? Of course, Grayson bounces back. I hate him. I hate him so much that I'm willing to spend my time speaking about it. I mean, kind of like what we do when we hate what Disney is doing. We don't hate the people. Well, we hate the people responsible for it. Not really the actors and actresses, but the showrunners who are responsible for the shows, the directors who are responsible for the shows, the producers who greenlight the shows that are shit. Top to bottom, beginning to end. Absolute, complete, and total garbage. It in comes... The Price of price of Reason. Definitely go follow Price of Reason on Twitter. Go follow him on YouTube. Fantastic content creator. As noted by YouTuber Price of Reason, Minute Nerd News approved of the... Oh, here's where we get into the fun. He does protest too much, me think. So let's see what we got here. Let's see. So Price of Reason did a little bit of digging. And this is what happens when you start slinging accusations around online. People start digging into the things that you have done. The nasty little things that some people may take offense to. In addition to shilling for anything Disney and MCU related, Grayson also seems to love it when people show up in Washington to burn American flags. Oh dear. Desecrate American monuments and support terrorist organizations. I don't know how much of this I can say. Hmm. But according to he, him, he, him, he's got pronouns in his bio. So we have this. Grayson celebrating all that stuff. Now, next tweet. What do we got here? When Trump was shot, Grayson was seemingly regretful that he had survived the attempt. Oh, dear Grayson. How could you say such a thing? We never, never celebrate or promote someone's almost death. That's not very nice. As for Nerdrotic, he responded on X, writing in jest, Good morning, my channel is under attack. 
Eh. That was the funniest part. After his response was picked up by Drama Alert, Beekler wrote, Oh no! Bra <laughs> Drama Alert picked this up. People are trying to cancel Nerd Roddick. After a random user dropped a mega thread accusing him of everything under the sun. Oh no. What do you think? The thread from Price of Reason is a very, very long one. I suggest go follow him. Go check it out. It's one skeleton after another, after another, after another, after another. Which, of course, led to good old Grayson. Probably led to him privating his account, locking everything down, going into hiding, then coming, out, coming back out of hiding because he just wanted those juicy little clicks like everybody else does. But the idea, you're going to go out of your way to go on this long, long hit piece. That was something else. Taking things out of context, not understanding criticism of the project, the product, is not necessarily criticism of the actor and actresses. That is something that people don't seem to understand. You can criticize characters like Rose Tico and not be going after the actress herself. You can criticize characters like Ray Palpatine and not have a problem with Daisy Ridley. But unfortunately, we live in a, we live in a day and age that if you criticize Reva from Obi-Wan, then you are obviously a racist bigot and hate Moses Ingram. And these are not, these, this is not the case. These two are not equal. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you think good old Grayson needs some, uh, some quality time in a rubber room? Oh, that may be too much to say, but hey, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Leave a like, leave a dislike, do all the nifty little things that YouTube is begging you to do. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.